Hello everyone and welcome to the first game we'll be covering from uh, the Grand Chester. Uh, it is the uh, Super Bet Poland Rapid and Blitz tournament and it features as usual 10 players. Magnus Carlsen, Wei Yi, Yang Shishtov Duda, Vincent Keimer, Nodrevek Abdusatorov, Gukesh, uh, um, uh, Anish Giri, Arjun Erigaisi, Kirill Shevchenko uh, and of course Pragnananda. And the first game, it's a beautiful one, has a beautiful finish to, uh, to the game, it features a very nice uh, valuable peace sacrifice that we of course will make a Pause the video moment. Uh, so let's uh, hear it. Nodrebek Abdusatorov, current world number five in classical versus Anish Giri. I believe he's around world number 15. Uh, but this is rapid. And in rapid, uh, Nodrebek is almost top 10. Not quite. I think he's around number 12. Uh, and Anish, uh, not even top 25, I believe. I could be wrong, but I don't think he is. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, Nodrebek with white opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to e5, knight f3, knight to c6, and pawn to g3. Already Nodrebek uh, says, all right, I, I can play anything. I'm the stronger player here. Uh, you are welcome to challenge that claim. And okay, we have knight to f6. This is the so-called Konstantinopolsky variation. Uh, we have knight to f6, d3, and the bishop to c5. Uh, we have bishop to g2. Pawn to d6 and knight to c3. Pawn to a5 and pawn to h3. Stopping any bishop to g4 uh, ideas. Pawn to h6, both players castle. Uh, and a king to h2. So you want to get the king off of this diagonal. Next you're going to move the knight. And you want to strike with pawn to f4. And then go after black's king. So very, very aggressive setup by Nodrebek. And Anish, uh, there is a game where bishop to e6 was played. Anish goes for knight to d4. And it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. Uh, Noderbeck captures it, knight captures on d4, bishop captures and knight to e2, kicks away the bishop, bishop back to b6, and now pawn to f4 as planned. We have pawn to a4, Anish grabbing more space on the queen side, bishop to d2 and pawn to c6. We have bishop to c3, now the bishop assumes this uh, much better diagonal, uh, rook to e8. We have queen to d2 and bishop to c7. Uh, sorry, queen to d2 and bishop to c7. And okay, both players doing very nicely here. Uh, Anish uh, also with a very nice position. Uh, Nodrebek is playing a bit risky here. He is exposing, exposing his king, but it is what you have to do in order to win games with white here. But look at that uh, bishop pair uh, Anish has. Could be very dangerous. Uh, so rook f2, preparing to double up on the f file. Pawn to c5 by Anish. We have rook a to f1, uh, and now rook to a6. The rook will help out along the defense of the 6th rank, but also can be shifted over to the, to the b file if needed. Pawn to b3, uh, pawn to b5, and now bishop back to b2. We have captures, captures, and just pawn to b4. So Anish's idea is pretty clear. He um, uh, paralyzed everything on the queen side. The center uh, also not um, uh, really uh, pro to, prone to opening up. And uh, what he wants to do is to double or even triple up on the A file and then start doing some damage here. So queen back to c1. We have queen to e7 and king to h1. We have rook to f8 uh, and pawn to g4. Uh, Nodrebek says, all right, you're not doing any, anything on the king side. Let's uh, push on the, on the king side. We have knight to h7. Uh, and knight to g1. And here just rook to a2. Here with this knight to g1 move, uh, Nodrebek actually made a little mistake here. Anish could, uh, uh, sorry, Anish, uh, yeah, Nodrebek made a little mistake. Anish could easily play e captures on f4, and although it looks like something you don't want to do to open up this bishop, the, the, the pawn can't really be captured. Uh, if, if you capture it, then a pawn to d5, and all of a sudden white's in, white's in big trouble. And if you don't capture it, then g5, and you have this pawn on f4 that you're not getting rid of for the rest of the game. So uh, definitely a mistake that Anish should have uh, taken advantage of. But he played rook to a2, and now queen to b1. With tempo attacks the rook, we have rook back to a8, and now pawn to f5. The uh, window of opportunity has closed. Uh, bishop to b7 now claiming this diagonal and the bishop back to c1, preparing to put pressure uh, on this diagonal and at some point execute g5. So pawn to f6 and now knight to e2. We have bishop to b6 uh, and uh, a bishop to e3, countering the bishop on e b6. We have bishop to c6 and now pawn to h4, just nicely continuing the push on the king side. 
rook to a6 and now queen to c1 putting more pressure on this diagonal here uh, rook f to a8 and now knight to g3 we have bishop to d8 uh, bishop to f3 and now queen to a7 tripling up on the a file now preparing rook a2 rook a1 uh, whatever is needed to, uh, to make progress in the game so queen d2 we have rook to a1 offering a rook trade and knight to h5 putting pressure on anisha's king side king to h8 and now king to h2 rook captures on f1 rook captures queen to f7 uh, and now uh, we have rook to g1, preparing to open up the g file. But the question is how? Uh, Anish has a very firm grip on the g5 square. Look at this the pawns defending it, the knight defending, the bishop defending. How is Noderbeck to break through here? Well, Anish goes for rook to a2. Rook to a7 was the way to go, uh, but he played rook to a2, and now Noderbeck. Uh, goes for it first rook g2 adds more support to the c2 pawn rook to a1 as the back rank has been vacated uh now there might be some ideas of maybe queen a7 queen a2 queen b1 maybe something like queen to h1 uh, all depends on what Noderbeck plays but Noderbeck goes for knight captures on g7 this is how he breaks through the g file and g5 hopefully for him is coming next queen captures on g7 Bishop captures on h6, first eliminating the two pawns, so it's not really that big of a sacrifice piece for two pawns. Queen to a7, and now pawn to g5. Uh, we have f captures on g5, and h captures on g5. Now, the problem for Anish is not so much his position, but that he's down to one minute on the clock, whereas Noderbeck has 14 minutes on the clock. And uh, wh which position would you have? Would you have? Would you take black with the extra piece, or white with the two connected pass pawns here? Uh, even regardless of the situation on, on the clock, I, I'd say if, even with Noderbeck having a minute and Anish having 14 minutes, that Noderbeck would very happily play this position. And uh, the only defense here is Rook to F1, but with a minute on the clock, I mean, you're not going to find this. Point being that after Rook F1 and let's say F6, you want to start advancing those pawns, so you're going to play Queen to A1, and now after F7, Rook to H1 check, King to G3 and Queen to F1. And there's no good way to make progress. If you, if you kick away the queen, the queen just goes to c1. And you cannot go to f8. Um, it's nicely covered. Or, or rather, you could go there, but then just knight captures. And after bishop captures, then queen to f4 um, uh, will be a nice checkmate. So that's, uh, that's the problem. So what you will have to do here, if you cannot, um, uh, if, if you cannot advance the pawn, you will... Uh, th th there's nothing much you play queen back to d2 and then queen back to f1 and then queen f2 queen to c1 and we will have a draw by repetition of course you cannot push g6 due to bishop to h4 also a big problem so that's the that's the the way to do it rook to f1 for on each but like i said with a minute on the clock to to too much of an ask so queen to a2 was played anish has now a different idea he wants to go after the c2 pawn uh, or even maybe some queen to b1 ideas followed by queen to h1 we have pawn to f6 uh, and now queen to b1 uh, we have rook to g3. Uh, there's no point in attacking the c2 pawn with the rook and the queen guarding it. But now uh, rook to g3 has been played with the idea that now the bishop covers the h1 square and the rook covers the g1 square. So you never have to worry about any sort of check or checkmate. Uh, it's merely a matter of advancing those pawns. But now Anish plays rook to a2. The, the rook moved from the second rank. And now, of course, the threat is rook captures on c2 to win the white queen. But uh, I'm pretty sure you have a good idea of uh, what Noderbeck played, feel free to pause the video here uh, and try to find the winning idea while I give you a couple of seconds. Sorry about that, some, uh, some uh, fly was attacking me. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that the queen on d2 is uh, completely useless. You do not need a queen to win this position. So of course, Noderbeck played f7, as did all of you watching this. Uh, so congratulations on that. And now there's nothing better than to play rook captures on c2. If you don't have that, you have nothing. And you don't have that, so you have nothing. So rook captures on c2 was played. g6 now. Giving up the queen. Of course, the, the queen cannot move. Rook captures on d2 check. Bishop to g2 now. Of course, not moving the bishop. The bishop must remain here to guard the g7 pawn. The g7 square. And now the threat is not this, not this. But the threat is g7 checkmate. 
And how do you stop this? There's no way to do it. Point being, if you move the knight, then a queen comes into the game. Okay, uh, you can play knight to g8, but now bishop g7 or queen g7 checkmate. So that will not work. So rook captures on g2 by Anish and just rook captures on g2. And he was in this position on move 49 that Anish Giri resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, g7, again, the threat of checkmate. Uh, again, now, okay, you could try knight to f8 now, but g7 check and after king to h7, uh, you get a queen into the game, and once the king moves, you take uh, this knight with check. And uh, yeah, there's uh, not, not much you can do here. If king to h7, then queen g7 checkmate, and if queen to, king to h5, uh, queen to h8 will be checkmate. So beautiful game by uh, by Noderbeck. Uh, it was a strong strong performance by both of them, but um, Noderbeck played much, much faster. Anish burned time like crazy, and in the end, he just didn't have time to find that rook to f1 move that could have saved the game for him. But yeah, brilliant game by Noderbeck. Uh, he uh, justifies, uh, of course, his rating. Uh, he is the, the classical world number five, so we are expecting great things from him. And he just uh, uh, won a very nice, uh, su su super strong tournament, the, the Tepe Sigman, uh, where he eliminated um, uh, Peter Siddler and uh, Arjun uh, Erigaisi uh, in the, in the tiebreaks. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. First game of this uh, very nice event. Uh, we're going to cover more of them. And of course, if you have any favorites, do use hashtag suggestion as usual. Uh, I would like to thank Michael Hildebrand, Johan Hoibai, Lorenzo Tessiore, Fred Ackerman, and Chess Legend for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.